Africa's ecosystem is extremely competitive and diverse, and it's home to some of the largest and most powerful land animals on this planet. Because Africa's ecosystem is so competitive, it's home to some of the toughest animals in the world. These animals have to battle every day just to stay alive, and if they were introduced into other ecosystems around the world, they could take over. In today's video, I will be focusing on the ecosystems of Africa and North America, as I will be going through three African animals that could potentially take over North American ecosystems if they were introduced. Of course, this video is completely hypothetical, and no one should introduce these animals outside of their native range. Without further ado, we can take a look at our first animal, and this animal is a feline. The cheetah is famously the fastest land animal on this planet, and it can travel at speeds of up to 65 miles per hour. It's evolved specialized adaptations to be able to run at this speed, including long thin legs and a long tail. There are a few things that the cheetah has had to sacrifice to be able to run this fast, and some of these things are weight and power. The cheetah is a very slim and lightweight cat, and this means that it often backs away from fights. Unlike many other African predators, they do not feed on carrion, and this means that when they usually kill an animal, they will eat it quickly and then leave. As they are a very slim cat, they are bullied by some of the larger predators in Africa, and they have to give up kills on a regular basis. Around 10% of cheetah kills are stolen, and the two predators that take most cheetah kills are lions and spotted hyenas. Their size also means that there's a limit to the size of prey that they can take down, as they usually target small to mid-sized ungulates. In some cases, they will work together to take down larger prey, but most of Africa's larger land animals are safe from cheetahs. This cat is currently listed as vulnerable, as their numbers have been declining at an astonishing rate. At the end of the 19th century, there were around 100,000 cheetahs in the wild, but only 7,000 of these animals remain today. Their main threats come in the form of habitat loss and human-wildlife conflict, but hopefully they'll be able to bounce back in the future. Even though we've had a massive effect on these animals over the past few hundred years, the cheetah almost went extinct thousands of years ago. At the end of the Pleistocene Epoch around 10,000 to 12,000 years ago, it's believed that the cheetah almost went extinct. As I've covered on the channel before, this information was thanks to US, Kenyan, and British researchers, and this team found that South African cheetahs had very little genetic variability. The researchers concluded that the species had gone through a near-extinction event, but thankfully a few small populations survived. Based on the information that the cheetah has gone through a near-extinction twice, it may not seem like they're capable of taking over North America. I would argue that they're more than capable, and North America was once home to a cheetah-like cat. The American cheetahs were an extinct genus of cats, and these animals were very similar in shape and size to the cheetahs. These animals were built for speed, and they could easily outrun the majority of America's land animals. Some experts believe that this animal is the reason why pronghorns can run so fast, because at one point in time they probably had to outrun the American cheetahs. This shows us that the cheetah would have a place in the North American ecosystem, and it would have a lot less competition than it would in Africa. It would do well in some of the larger, warmer states, and especially in states with large deer populations. It would face competition from bears, wolves, coyotes, and cougars, but it's used to dealing with a lot worse in Africa. I believe it could take over certain states such as Texas, and this is partly due down to it having 5.3 million white-tailed deer. You'll have to let me know what you think in the comments down below, but personally I think the cheetah would do very well in the southern US and Mexico. For our next African animal we will be heading south, as we will be taking a look at the Cape Cobra. The Cape Cobra is a highly venomous species of cobra, and it can be found over a wide variety of biomes across southern Africa. Unlike some species of snake that are sluggish and slow-moving, the Cape Cobra is extremely active and gets most of its hunting done during the day. They feed on a wide variety of animals and they're not afraid to go up into the trees to get them, as they'll often raid bird nests for their eggs. A study from 2004 to 2006 showed exactly what these animals feed on, with around 31% of their diet being made up of rodents, 20% being made up of snakes, 11% lizards, 11% birds, 16% carrion, and 11% their own kind. 
the Cape Cobra is considered the most dangerous cobra in all of Africa, as it has a very potent venom and it is also very active. One bite is enough to kill you without treatment, but in most cases they will choose to avoid humans. In the wild, these animals do have a few predators, including honey badgers, mongooses, secretary birds and snake eagles. These animals can put a dent in their numbers, but these snakes still have a very healthy population in the wild. Personally, I think this snake would do very well in the southern United States and Mexico, as this area has an abundance of snakes, and it also has an abundance of small rodents and lizards. As the Cape Cobra likes to feed on other snakes, it would do very well in these areas, but it may have trouble with some of the more venomous species. The Cape Cobra has some immunity to snake venom, but it has immunity to the venoms of the snakes that it's used to coming across. It's unknown if it would have any immunity against rattlesnake venom, but it would definitely be able to take down the majority of North American snake species. Part of the reason why I think it would do so well is because of its behaviour. It's extremely active and aggressive, and it can cover large areas in search of food. It would have to deal with predators such as coyotes, foxes, hawks and owls, but its potent venom may help it fight back. Once again, you'll have to let me know what you think in the comments down below, but I think this snake has what it takes. The next animal we will be taking a look at is a canine, and it's another endangered species. The African wild dog is also known as the painted dog or the African hunting dog, and it's a wild canine native to sub-Saharan Africa. It is the largest wild canine in Africa, and it's the only living species in its genus. Unfortunately, this animal is really struggling today, as there are only around 6,600 adults left in the wild. They are threatened by habitat fragmentation, human persecution, and outbreaks of disease. But these animals truly are impressive predators. They are known for their stamina, and they can travel at speeds of up to 37 miles per hour for 3 miles or more. Around 80% of their hunts are successful, and this is an extremely high percentage compared to other animals. Their decline in numbers is not due down to their hunting ability, but instead it's because of their competition and because of human-related factors. Personally, I think these canines would do very well in southern North America and Central America, and they would have a lot less competition than they do in Africa. The grey wolf once had a much larger range in North America, but it was pushed back due to human-related factors. This shows us that it is possible for large canines to dominate North America, and even the smaller canines do very well. One of the most dominant canines in North America is the coyote, and the African wild dogs would have to compete with these canines. The coyotes would actively avoid these dogs as they are a lot smaller, and the African wild dogs are also found in packs. In these packs, they have very strong social bonds, and they'll often defend each other with their lives. In the wild, they mostly feed on medium to large sized undulates, so they do very well in North America. But once again, you'll have to let me know what you think in the comments below. There are plenty of other African animals that could have made it into this video, so if you think you know of any, then let me know down in the comments below. But until next time, goodbye.